everyone, welcome back to Live Today 101. In one of my shorts, I said that there are two steps to creating a VTuber, art and animation. And you know how family trees start out simple and then go absolutely nuts the further you go down? That's how these two steps are. Now don't click off, it's not that scary, I promise. Once you actually do these steps, you'll see that some of them are easy to memorize, easy to do. It's more like busy work, but it's necessary. Let's get into the program and start this session. Here you are in the Live 2D program. You already have your art file done. Congratulations! What we're gonna do is we're gonna take your PSD, you see? Drag it in, drag it in. You can do it another way, but I like to do this nice and simple. It loads it up and the first things you're going to see, okay, you're also gonna see this pop up, uh, half preview, one fourth preview, whatever else. I usually do half preview and then when I go into the eyes, I put it back to full scale, which you can do in the file or edit section, but just do what you want. It's just how you're going to see the file. So this is what we have. In the corner here, we have your art folder. This corner, we have the deformer folder. This is where like warp deformers and rotation deformers are going to be in. Down here, we have your parameters. This is where you're going to put points of animation. We're not going to talk about any of that today. All we're going to talk about today is setup. Because right now, if we are to click file, export for runtime, export as MOC3 file, this is how you export your VTuber model. If we do this right now, what happens? We get this dialog. Oh, see, you heard it yelling at me. You get this box that says invoke after texture atlas is generated. Why? What is this? The texture atlas is where the art sits. And the art doesn't look like just the artwork. It's also this. If you look here and you click on mesh edit, it's this box. Let's mess around with this box. So here we have a art mesh. It's just the box. It's the default. We didn't do anything to it. And I added a warp deformer on it. You add a warp deformer by clicking here. You see how it's barely moving? Every side I pick. The only thing that makes it move more is like this side. Well, I don't want that. Let's just put a auto mesh on it for now. Now when I move it, all of it is moving. I can move any point I want. If I want to do this, I can. All of it's moving. If I were to do that with the old one, use this tool, it's not, it's not really moving at all. That's what the art mesh really does. Not only is it necessary for animation, but it is also necessary for the texture atlas. Now that we've gone over a high level view of what an art mesh is and what it does, let's go back to when we hit control A and auto meshed everything. When I hit control A and I do auto standard, it will only grab the things that are visible right now. And if nothing is locked, that means that when I do an edit texture atlas, which we can try right now, this step I like to do at the end and you're going to see why. This doesn't have a auto mesh on it at all. It is a box, which a box is a clear sign that there's no auto mesh on it. That's because these items are not visible right now. So when I hit control A and I put a standard one, it's not going to grab it. Because of that, I like to edit my texture atlas at the very end because by that point i have already put a mesh on everything i also edited some of my meshes you could do it early if you wanted to i don't like to because it just makes things a uh, very disorganized right so let's say i wanted to do it early there's a little eye button right next to my shoulder here you see right at the bottom here the deformer eye button if I click it off and I turn it back on, it will turn on everything. Crazy. I hate that, but it does work. You can just hit control A. You can see like this one over here is like a box. Now look at it change. It's a box right now. I do auto standard again, and now it's not a box anymore. If I were to do texture atlas now, look at these nice little curves. That looks a lot nicer than before. This is the step to do after you've put an art mesh on everything. By the way, if you like this video, it would mean so much if you like and subscribe. Now that you're here, what do you wanna do? Over on this side is all of your art pieces. Everything that goes into a VTuber. So you want to see this empty. There shouldn't be a single thing in here if it's gonna be used in your VTuber model. One thing I like to do is I like to click on the first one, scroll down to wherever. I'm gonna just scroll to this slime. I'm gonna hit shift and click, highlights all of these. Then I right click, and it says place selected objects to a texture atlas. Cool. Now they're all here. So I like to hit control A and then I do automatic layout. This margin will say how far apart each one is. I keep it at two. You can do whatever you like. These are the settings I like. This should be at 100%. You do not want to reshape them at all. If you make them smaller or bigger, 
They will show up like that in your VTuber model export. Hit OK. Nothing worked. <laughs> now, nothing works because this is a very odd shape. So when it says two pixels apart, it's trying to do it in this shape. It's not considering to put some of these items here. So that'll happen sometimes. You can just take this off and then do all this automatic layout. And it looks so much nicer. Oh my gosh. But you saw how that piece messed it up. So I would just say, put some thought behind what it's selecting because you're smarter than the machine. You're smarter than the machine. And sometimes it's just not going to work out and you can find turnarounds to make it a little easier. You want this all to be filled out. Put as many things as you can on a page. If you cannot fit something, you're going to have to add another page. The more pages you have, the bigger the pages are. It can make your VTuber model file really heavy or lag. Just keep it in mind that you want to fit as many of these in a page. If you have to have another page though, no harm, no foul. It's better to have more pages that are smaller in like size like this than it is to have one big page that fits everything. Some tips too. They should not be touching. You should not have a blue touching another blue part. They need to be away from each other. Otherwise, they're going to act like glue and stick to each other in the VTuber model export. So just make sure to keep things within the box. So don't put things out on the gray. And also make sure that these do not touch each other. That's why when it's correctly meshed, it's really nice. So if it's correctly meshed, all of this would have been like outlined here. And I could put things in this space. And I also move things around. You can rotate them a little bit like this. And so like if this was correctly meshed, there would be a blue outline here. I could put things here around the head like that. Don't use this, this is reshaping it. Um, you can see here in the scale, it's like telling you how much you're reshaping it. So what I like to do is if I do that by accident, I just click back on scale and put a hundred and it'll put it back to its original size. You could also just press control Z. Fill up all of these until all of these are gone. And then you're going to hit OK at the bottom. That'll create your texture atlas. Now you should be able to export your beautiful VTuber model. Of course, remember to actually animate this is not the animating piece. And just to reiterate, because I really want to make sure that you fit this piece where it works for you. For me, it works at the end before I'm going to export the file. Every time I make a VTuber model, I go like this. Clip things to where they need to be clipped. Make sure my blend modes are correct. Specifically with the blend mode add. Let's say this is supposed to be a highlight additive. I just make it match up to what it looks like in the Photoshop file. Additive is usually wrong, multiply is usually right, and normal is always right. That's the default. After I do that, I auto mesh whatever I can, and then I start grouping things in the deformer file, similar to how I group them in the art files. So that works for me because I set up all the hair in one folder. So let's see, I have all these little glitch things in one folder. So they're all in a pack together. There's a lot of organization that goes before you even go and animate. After all the deformer files are in a good space, I start to animate them using this section, the parameter section. All the while I am doing this, I'm making sure that everything that I am animating has a mesh on it, whether I'm using auto standard or I go in and edit the mesh myself. After I am satisfied with the animation and I wanna export my MOC3 file, I make sure everything has a mesh on it. That's when I do the edit texture atlas step, the step we showed today. I cannot export my VTuber model until that step is done. That was a lot, I know, but I am so proud of you. You got through it and now you learned one more step to get you towards your end goal of creating a VTuber model. I made this video because someone commented this question. So now if you ever get that pop-up, you know what it means. If you have other questions, feel free to comment them below. Feel free to check one of my other videos out. Um, some of them do not just go over live 2D, but actually go over how you can do things to your model within VTube Studio app itself. Like this, giving myself some pink ears, which is really cute. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day.